Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome back to 7th Street. Hey, man. I'm a rock singer, not Walt Disney. Bears. Nature's godless heathens. Fuck bears. I fucking hate bears. They're terrifying. Living in the Pacific Northwest and being someone that enjoys hiking around our many beautiful mountain ranges, the threat of a bear attack feels very real even though it's like super duper rare, it'll like never happen. And it's for this reason that I actually really, really enjoy a good monster bear horror movie. Outsmarted by a grizzly? I doubt that. <laughs> There are actually more killer bear movies out there than you'd think. There are fairly well-received killer bear movies like 1976's Grizzly, which is an obvious Jaws cash grab. People at this time just couldn't get enough of nature gone wrong spectacles, and this is actually one of the better ones. Grizzly. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have movies like John Frankenheimer's Prophecy, about some toxic waste that turns the local bear population into huge, slimy, killer bear puppets. Prophecy, the monster movie. And then, of course, you have award-winning films like Grizzly Man, which isn't really a horror film at all. I mean, it's a documentary about Timothy Treadwell, a complete nut job who went out into the wild to make his own nature documentaries about bears, got way too close to these horrifying killing machines way too many times, and ended up being eaten by a bear. Shocker. But the movie I want to talk about today is a little-known killer bear class classic from the 1970s called Claws. Okay, this movie was obviously made just to cash in on the success of Jaws. I mean, the title makes that very clear. But to those who haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend this one. <laughs> The movie takes place in a small Alaskan town somewhere deep in the wilderness. And of course, to be extra terrifying, the movie opens with two solid minutes of actual footage of a bear fight. After one of the bears is shot, but not killed by a trio of local big game hunters, the wounded animal becomes a man-hating killer, and is even rumored to have supernatural powers by the local Native American population. If he hunt devil bear, he don't come back. That bear is Kustika, a devil. Let me just get this out of the way now. This movie, like a lot of older films, doesn't exactly handle its depiction of Native Americans in a very culturally appropriate way. I think I go drink whiskey. You come drink whiskey too. Damn fire, I go drink whiskey. Yeah. The local Native American population in this film have a slew of different nicknames for this bear, including the Devil Bear, the Satan Bear, the Demon Bear, and the Kushtaka. A bear is Kushtaka. A devil. Kushtaka are mythical, shape-shifting creatures found in the folklore of the Native Americans from the Pacific Northwest. From what I can tell, the Kushtaka are shapeshifters capable of assuming human form, the form of an otter, and potentially other forms. The aspect of the bear actually being a Kushtaka from this folklore is only very loosely touched upon during the movie, and it's played more as like a hallucination by one of the Native American characters, Henry. Of course, Henry, the Native American character in this film, is actually played by Italian-American character actor Anthony Caruso, 
Kind of like Iron Eyes Cody, another popular Native American character that was famously played by an Italian. What's with that? I mean, why were Italians playing Native Americans in the 70s so goddamn much? I know, Henry. It's all right. Jason Monroe is our lead protagonist and is the first person to be attacked by the bear. He survives, but he's left with permanent injuries and a profound hatred for the animal. Jason's preoccupation with the bear eventually causes his wife Chris to leave him, taking their young son Buck with her. Jason now lives with just his friend Henry. Jason and Henry's friendship comes off as a little homoerotic at times, and it's always good for a little chuckle or two. Alright, now let's go back to bed, huh? Back to bed. Jason's wife takes their son to the big city and is now fucking their son's Boy Scout leader. Jason's grisly rage is only intensified further when his boy Bucky is attacked and seriously injured while out camping on a trip. Help! The coast is coming! Mr. Lockhart! The coast is coming! Big city reporters then show up to hassle put upon forest commissioner Ben Chase and a bunch of redneck yahoos organize a posse to try and hunt down the bear after the beast kills the local sheriff. The sheriff in this movie is actually played by character actor Myron Healy. What? Why aren't you guys excited? It's Myron Healy! Oh, come on, you guys know who Myron Healy is? He was the star of the Americanized version of Varan the Unbelievable. Okay, so... Maybe I am the only person on the planet that gives a shit about that. From this point on, the movie sort of reminds me of the story of Moby Dick, with a disgruntled Jason being the Captain Ahab character who becomes obsessed with killing the bear by any means necessary, even if it kills him in the process. The fact that he and his son will forever be scarred by the grizzly, both mentally and physically, lends a lot of weight to this situation. The personal vendetta is a really nice touch in my opinion. You filthy murdering devil! Where are you? I'M GONNA KILL YOU! YOU BLOODY MURDERING BASTARD! Jason brings along with him his Italian Native American friend Henry, the town commissioner Ben Chase, and the scout leader, who is not only playing stepdaddy to Jason's son, but is also sort of responsible for his son getting mauled. This adds yet another personal layer to the film, which I quite like. Howard, the scout leader, is not an unlikable character. It's certainly not directly his fault that little Bucky was nearly killed by the bear. In a way, you find yourself rooting for all of these characters to redeem themselves. They all have something to prove, not just to each other, but to themselves. I put four 375 slugs into it from less than 20 feet. God, it was as big as a house. The ending of this movie is pretty damn cool for a low-budget creature feature. It's discovered that the men are all being hunted themselves by the devil bear, and one by one they are picked off until it's just Jason and the bear duking it out mano y mano. Jason's ex-wife Chris arrives with a flare gun, and they blast the creature, setting him ablaze. <laughs> When I rented Claws from Movie Madness a few years back, I expected to like it. But I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. This is a movie that I will rewatch pretty frequently, and I've gone out of my way to show it to friends and recommend it to other monster movie buffs. Despite having a meager budget and production values, the movie Claws makes the most of its striking Alaskan nature scenery, as well as some very effective bear attacks done in slow motion. This makes it more than worth watching.
Claws is a movie that I've wanted to do a video on for a very long time now. It's one that I fell in love with instantly and has incredible rewatchability to it. And as far as I know, it's never been released on DVD or Blu-ray. Every version of the movie that's out there is like some VHS copy and it's very muddy and dark and choppy. I would love to see this movie get the special treatment that it deserves. And you know, maybe that would actually happen if more people would just reference this film. Crimp that, you bastards. You don't have to be physical about it. <laughs>